five, four, three, two, one. It's the kids' time! start off with some prayer and then we'll talk about what we're going to talk about. Father, we're so glad that you brought us together today and Lord, we just pray that you would help each of us to learn something new today. Lord, we pray that our hearts would be open and our minds would just soak up the things that you want us to learn. In your name we pray, amen. So today we're going to talk about righteousness and I wanted to teach you guys something that I actually just learned today. Um, a little sign language to help us kind of just remember things a little bit differently so I want you to take your left hand and put it out like this and then your right hand you're gonna cross your fingers like this let me show you that again just like this and then you're gonna wipe it from your wrist to the front of your hand so from your wrist to the front of your fingers that's how you say righteous in sign language so left hand right hand wipe that means righteous. So today we're going to be talking about righteousness, righteous. Um, and I want you every time you hear the word righteous to just sign it, help you remember the word righteous. Okay. So today while we talk about righteousness, we're going to talk about God's righteousness and how God sent his son Jesus to be our righteousness. And because of Jesus, we are righteous in Christ. We're righteous with God and that means that we are able to be in right relationship with God because we're not perfect, but God's love makes us perfect. So he sent us the gift of his son. At Christmas time, we celebrate that. Um, so I thought it'd be fun if I was in my living room by my Christmas tree. I really just love Christmas and Christmas trees. So I just thought it would be fun to add in the Christmas tree to just kind of help us remember that at Christmas time, we're celebrating God's righteousness. Our King is here. Shine Men of earth and angels cheer. Glory right before our eyes. Majesty in a manger lies.
long ago, God the Father planned for Jesus, his son, to be our righteous king. There were many earthly kings who ruled before Jesus came to earth. Kings and queens protect their people from enemies. They help solve problems, keep track of the country's money, and more. The kings who ruled Israel did those things too. God desired for his kings to lead his people into righteousness. So, God set a plan in motion to do just that. Long before Jesus came to earth, God sent prophets to give messages to his people. God used a prophet named Samuel to tell a young shepherd that God had chosen him to be Israel's king. He would empower he would be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be the great king for God's people. That shepherd was David, and he became king. God gave a special promise in 2 Samuel 7.16 to King David. God told King David that he would give him a kingdom that would never end. When God said this, he meant that one day Israel's true king would be born through King David's family. The king would be very different from every other king. That king was Jesus. He's the only holy and righteous person who ever lived on the earth. David wasn't perfect, but he loved God and followed him. David made mistakes along the way, and still God used him to faithfully lead his people. Unfortunately, many other kings of Israel who ruled after King David didn't follow God. They disobeyed God's laws, worshipped false gods, and led God's people unfairly. These kings turned God's people away from him. This was so sad. God never quit trying to turn his people back to him. God spoke to his people through many prophets, trying to tell them, choose to follow him instead of false gods. Today we're going to discover what God said through the prophet Jeremiah. God gave Jeremiah a prophecy like the one he gave to David. God said that he would bring a king from David's family line who would rule God's people with righteousness. In fact, Jeremiah said that the king's name would be the Lord our righteous Savior. When God's promised king Jesus finally came, his people had a hard time recognizing him. Jesus spent time with poor people. Kings don't usually do that. Jesus ate with sinners. Kings don't usually do that. Jesus took care of people and he served people instead of being of instead of asking people to serve him. That's definitely not something that kings do. Jesus was a king of a different kind. In fact, Jesus was so different that he died on the cross and rose again. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 224 that he himself bore his sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness by his own wounds we have been healed Jesus's death for our sins his death makes us righteous that means if we accept what he did for us we trust in Jesus. He gave us his righteousness. Jesus makes us righteous because of his righteousness. Jesus is our King of Kings and our righteous Savior. Through Jesus, God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He made us righteous, just as he is righteous. You see, when Jesus died and took our sins away, he gave us righteousness. Now, if we have believed in Jesus as our righteousness, when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin. Jesus took that away. All he sees is our righteousness because of Jesus. So now our hearts are like gold, worthy of giving back to God because Jesus has made us righteous.
This is my friend Miss Norma. Hey everybody. Miss Norma is the director of the House of Hope for our church and the community, and they spend a lot of time reaching out to families in need. But Miss Norma, we have something special going on, right? Yes, we do. We have a beautiful light show we are going to be uh, having for all of the children on December 19th. It's a Saturday from 6.30 to 8.30, and we want to invite everyone out. Every child is going to get a toy, and it's going to be lots and lots of fun. So come join us.